Hey friendlies, I'm Carolyn. Welcome back to my life living and traveling in an RV, which I've been doing for five and a half years now. Today I'm going to answer some of the questions that you guys have been asking me about my RV life. So just going to jump right in. I've chosen a few questions from the comments that I have been seeing recently, and I'm just going to answer questions about why I travel so much how I manage to not get lost when I'm hiking, and how to use my oven. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and answer that one. And how to use my RV oven. I just had a question recently, and I do have a hack for how I use my oven, so I'll, I'll talk about that one last. There ain't nobody gonna do it for you. Got to find your own. So the first question comes from Brian Leonard, and Brian is out comments on a regular basis and you're always kind and supportive and I appreciate that. But Brian wants to know basically, why don't I stay in one place longer? And there's really a couple reasons for that. Number one is because I had a little bit of a time crunch this year because I wanted to be in New England for the fall. So being in New England for the fall means that I have a very kind of narrow window of when I'm going to be there and how long I can stay. I can't be in New England uh, in December, January. I don't want to be here in the snow and below freezing temps. So there was a little bit of a, a schedule there in, in my travels. But really, I think the biggest reason in this trip specifically why I don't stay longer in one place is because of the types of camping I'm finding. I am not going to stay two weeks in a place that I'm not comfortable. I'm not going to stay two weeks in a campground. I'm not going to stay two weeks in a crowded place. If I'm going to stay put, it's going to be in a place that I have the, free, the, the three S's, solitude, signal and sun for my solar. And that's almost impossible to find in most places, not almost impossible. It's really, really challenging to find that east of the Mississippi. So at best I find a spot and I'm like, okay, I'll stay here for a couple of days to get caught up on work. And then I'm gonna move cause I'm gonna go try to find that perfect spot. But the thing is you very rarely find that perfect spot. I have some videos coming up where I was able to find those spots and I stayed. 10 days, I think, in one in Michigan. And then there was another recently near Bennington, Vermont. I stayed for 10 days. So when I find the the perfect spot for me, that you know, being an introvert, that's what I need to recharge. I'm not gonna stay someplace that's not gonna recharge me because I'm gonna be stressed out the whole time. So I think that's probably the biggest reason I don't stay longer in one spot because I haven't been able to find a place that I wanna stay. And I'm constantly, you know, playing catch up. Okay, I'm going to stay for a couple of days. I'm going to get caught up on my hiking and my work and and then I'm going to move on and hopefully move to another location and maybe get closer to finding those great boondocking spots where I can really just spread out and enjoy and not have to worry about moving for a while. So those are the reasons, the time crunch and really just not being able to find spots that I want to stay in. Uh, you know, why stay in a spot that I'm not completely happy in for a week or seven days. I would rather move on and try to find that perfect spot. <laughs> but that's really challenging in this part of the country. So that's a really good question, Brian. Thank you so much. A few people have been asking that. Why are you traveling so much? Why do you keep traveling? And I don't know. I'd rather just push on, hoping to find something better. And uh, I don't know, maybe that's a fault of mine. I don't know, you know, but it's just how I have been doing things. So thank you for the question. And Lola, the second question, Lola wants to know, how do I manage in my hikes to not get lost? And it's really funny because before I decided to do this Q&A video this morning, and it's Thursday, I'm just shooting it now, I was out for a walk this morning and I followed a trail and it kind of got lost. And on the way back, I turned around, and I'm like, okay. And I just got really nervous that I was gonna get lost. I did have my cell phone with me and a cell signal. So I would have been able to find where I'm camped because I'm in a campground. But generally, how do I not get lost? Generally, I'm following roads, I'm following trails, I'm following streams or rivers. So generally, there's a really good anchor to my travels in the desert. There's a mountain or it's flat enough that I'm not going far enough that I know where I am. In general, I'm following something that's going to be able to lead me back. I did get lost that one time. I think I told you the story in Oregon, my first year out, took a shortcut. I mean, I wasn't even a quarter mile from camp. 
to go to a lake, took a shortcut back, and I got lost for an hour, hour and a half, two hours. I, I was a little nervous. I really got lost. But that was me just totally not paying attention to what I was doing. That I made a lot of mistakes. But in general, and I've been finding this recently because I am kind of traipsing through the woods more than I normally do, not following a path, I just really pay attention to my surroundings. I pay attention to trees, downed trees, a big rock, uh, anything that is out of the ordinary, you know, anything that might stand out if I do get lost, I try to look around so that I know what's around me, so that if I get turned around, I can know, okay, yes, I recognize that downed tree. Oh yes, I recognize that rock. Uh, I don't always carry my cell phone with me. I, I sometimes, for me, because I don't, I make a conscious choice sometimes to not take my cell phone, because it's like, if I take my cell phone, then I'm gonna be, I'm gonna feel compelled to record. And a lot of times I end up with material that it's like, I don't know what to do with this, because I didn't record any context around it. So sometimes I just leave my cell phone at home just so that I'm not tempted to record stuff that I'm not gonna know how to work into a video later. Um, I don't even know how to record just for myself anymore. And so sometimes I don't even have my cell phone with me. But if I do have my cell phone with me, I do have a walking app. I don't always turn it on. Um, I don't always have a cell signal. So unless the walking app is on, and I suggest you look uh, for, there's just all kinds of, iPhone has a walking app. There's like iFit, I don't know. There's all kinds of walking apps. And yeah, the GPS on those, if you're worried about getting lost, turn on the, the walking app before you head out. You don't have to have a cell signal. It works on GPS most of the time. I think. And then you can just follow the red line back to your RV. So that is a good way to do it. You get a walking app. It gives you a red line to show where you are. And from what I've seen from using them, they're accurate enough that you'll be able to find your way back. You know that if you're off the red line, you know, there will be a red line to show your path of how you got there. And if you end up all the way over here, you should be able to navigate enough back to the red line to take you back to where you started. You know, the biggest piece of advice I can give if you're worried about getting lost, number one, if you're a newbie, if, you've, if you're have if you not used to backpacking and hiking alone, uh, don't go far. You need to kind of work on your own own navigation skills, I think. Uh, you know me, I've got thousands of miles under my belt of hiking, probably a thousand miles of solo backpacking under my belt. So I've got a lot of experience. And if you don't, you really need to take some precautions like a walking app uh, until you get, you know, 100 miles or so, whatever. I don't know what that number is for you until you get some experience under your belt. But you do, you know, always know which direction is north, south, east, west, that'll help you. Um, and I think I intuitively kind of know now, you know, I know the sun rose over there. So if I'm, and, and it's kind of going in a tra trajectory like this, so it's going over the nose of my RV. So that might also help me navigate but it doesn't get to that point anymore. I've gotten really good at recognizing waypoints, recognizing things even out in the woods. I was out this morning and there was a branch that went like this and there were things hanging off it that I had to duck under. And for a minute I was like, am I gonna be able to find my way back? You know, I was looking for Sadie. And within five minutes, I found that branch. I'm like, okay, I know I'm on the right track. I recognize that branch. Being aware of your surroundings in any situation is probably gonna be your number one key to survival in any situation, you know, whether it's personal safety or whether it's finding your way and navigating in the woods. So good question, Lola. I know a lot of people uh, are always curious about how I manage to do that, but I really think a lot of it comes down to experience. If you're inexperienced, you just wanna take every precaution, be careful, don't go venturing out into the woods alone without any um, safety, you know, without a, uh, without a cell phone, without an app that's going to help you navigate. All right. And the final question comes from Laura Broussard. Am I using my oven for baking my muffins? Is it hard to bake in them? So I'm going to give you a hack. I'm going to give you a trick that I have learned for making the best baking situation for my oven. 
So I have a three burner stove. It works fine. It's a gas stove, runs on propane, and I use it every day. And the oven in this time of year especially, I love to bake because I love I love double purposing my uh, my utilities, especially my propane. So why turn on the heat when it run the fan runs my battery down? Um, you know everything runs on solar and it charges my battery. And the more I use the electronics in there, the lower my battery gets. So I have to pull out the generator. So if I can double up on use of my propane, why not turn on the oven? I can heat my, the inside of my RV and I can also bake something yummy or dinner or whatever. Uh, so I do use the oven a lot in the winter. Sometimes I even turn it on low just to heat the RV, especially at night if the battery is getting low. You might be careful with that. I have a carbon monoxide detector and all the alarms and everything. So uh, don't recommend doing that. It's just what I do. And as far as the oven, here's what I have found. I bake everything in there, bread, muffins, you know, casseroles, lentil loaves, what I've recently learned to get the best product, the best bread, the best muffins or whatever, is that I split the time in half. So if, it, if the recipe calls to bake something for 50 minutes, I set the timer for 25 minutes. And then when that timer goes off, I flip it around. So many of you, I don't know how the newer RVs are, the stove in mine lets a lot of heat out the back. Um, I can feel it and I actually put um, baking sheets and stuff on the back wall. It used to have a cover that went up, but that was a pain in the butt and the hinge broke. So I took the cover off completely. And now I just line the wall with baking sheets or whatever to reflect that heat back out into the rig because a lot of heat comes up the back of the of the stove. So that means all that heat is escaping the back of the stove. The, I was noticing the front of my stove was getting hotter and things were cooking faster in the front. So now what I do is I set a timer and I flip things around. So what was in the front then for the second half of the bake will be facing the back. So what was getting the most heat in the front will be getting less heat for the second half of the baking for an even cook. Does that make sense? So you wanna flip it around so that what was in the front for the first half is now in the back so that you can get an equal bake so that what was in the back getting all that less heat because it was escaping will now be in the front getting more heat. And I'm getting oh, so much better bake now. My breads are cooking more evenly. My muffins are cooking more evenly and they're really turning out quite well. And that brings me to another question. You guys are asking, a lot of you have asked for a cookbook and I've been like, you, like no, I'm not doing a cookbook because the perfectionist in me is like do you know what goes into making a cookbook I mean they do test kitchens you know and and uh, professional photos and all of this stuff but uh, and I'm like I'm not gonna do that I just throw stuff together I have started writing down my recipes and you know and and I just throw stuff together sometimes it tastes pretty good sometimes it doesn't sometimes it's delicious I just made a banana bread recently that was the best vegan gluten-free banana bread I ever made. I'm going to try to perfect that recipe, remember what I did, and write it down. So I'm going to start writing recipes down. I will start working on a cookbook because you guys are asking, and why not? I mean, if you're asking for it, you know, why not? I will put together a cookbook. That, those are the three questions I wanted to answer from you guys today. I hope that you found this video entertaining, informative, helpful, whatever it is you're here for. Uh, I want to say thank you all so much for being here. Thank you so much for your kindness. And I have to say, I have spent the last uh, couple months traveling to this part of the country, meeting some of you. And I am so honored and so proud that so many people came out to meet me, not only only in the two meetups, which were phenomenal. And I still, man, the, the energy of the New York meetup was just out of this world. So much positive, wonderful, loving, kind energy from both. But there was just a, an extra level. And I wonder, I was thinking about this, I wonder if it's because I'm from here. The second meetup was in Syracuse, New York. And I wonder if it was just like, Maybe there really is something that connects us when we're brought up in the same areas. You know, maybe that was it. I don't know. And in addition to that, I have gotten to meet some 
other viewers face-to-face, one-on-one. In my travels through Maine and Massachusetts and Vermont, I got to meet a couple of you and one-on-one and have lunch with you and spend some time with you where you live and, uh, you know, the the couple who came out. I don't know if I should mention your name. I don't know if you guys want me to mention your names. Uh, I know you, we talked about this and you, you said you would keep it secret, but uh, I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you just want to say hi let me know but uh the couple that i met who came out and met me i rented a cabin for a few days in port uh, in maine and i got to meet a couple of you who came out and joined me so the one-on-one you know meeting people one-on-one who i already the reason i was able to meet them one-on-one is because they've either been commenting for a super long time or have been patrons for a long time so i've gotten to recognize comments and just have gotten to know you in that much smaller community but A couple of you I met just because you've been commenting for a long time and I feel like I know you. And meeting you all face to face have turned friendlies into friends. And I want to thank you. It just means the world to me. It really is helpful to get off the internet and meet people face to face so that I know that you're real and uh, that you're wonderful and kind and caring human beings. So I'm grateful. I'm honored for everyone who is here watching my videos. It just means so much to me that you're here through it all. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, leave the questions, leave your comments or questions below. Who knows, maybe I'll feature you and your name and everything in a future video. So leave your comments below. I want to hear from you. I want to hear your questions. I probably will start repeating questions. Sorry for those of you who've been around for a while. You know, I get questions, same questions over and over about solar and gas mileage and all kinds of things. So I might be covering more of those uh, in the future as well. So always try to keep it interesting though. Thank you all so much for being here. Just honored and grateful that you're here. I'll see you next time. In the meantime, be happy, be free, and be kind. See you soon. Bye. I gotta go find my dog. Sadie, come. You are such a good girl. What are you doing? Can I see you? Want a treat? You're such a, okay, be free.